And there's the roar of the crowd, and that's the thing that Muhammad Ali enjoys more than anything. As he enters the arena at the Astrodome, he was here last July when he fought Jimmy Ellis and went into the 12th round before he could win. And there he is putting on a show for the customers, but he's also a superb professional, and he's warming up on this long haul to the ring as Buster Mathis awaits him. Now, are we going to get some sort of confrontation of words before... So welcome then to a ringside seat at this giant Astrodome, Houston, Texas, to watch this best-known face in the world there, Muhammad Ali, also known as Cassius Clay, staring into the face of Buster Mathis, who qualifies as his heavyweight, heaviest rival for 10 years. Now calling it, of course, inevitably here, Muhammad goes to the mountain. 16 stone, 3 pounds, Muhammad Ali, 18 stone, 4 pounds, Mathis. and scheduled for 12 rounds. Well now, how is Mathis going to try and come at Ali? He's been saying all week that he's going straight at him from the bell, and Ali's saying that the extra weight, the heaviest he's ever been, 16-3, will make no difference to his dancing. This is quite a handicap if Mathis can use this weight. He has twice defeated Joe Frazier as an amateur. He lost to Frazier in 11 rounds as a pro, but the judges had the fight even up to the 10th round. And already I think he's hit Ali more than uh, about six of opponents I could think. He's walked in and thrown a left hook. At least he's got through somewhere with it, Mathis. A great deal now does depend on the mental attitude of Massif. He's been known to freeze a bit in previous fights. He had 23 winning fights before he went in with Frazier. Lost that one and then had some disputes with management and psychologically he was complaining. He said he wanted a long rest. He took 32 months out of the ring and he now says, I'm, I'm absolutely a new man and I have no fear whatsoever for Ali. The referee, just been named in, this Chris Jordan in this rather decorative shirt. Looks as though he's a pop singer found his way into the ring. Well, if Mathis can lean on Ali like this, this could tire him if this extra pound which he's five pounds heavier than he was in July five and a half pounds heavier than he was against Frazier last March but he's getting that rapier left hand going now what a superb boxing artist this man is Well, I'll hand it to Mathis for at least going looking for Ali. It's no use standing there and waiting to come for you. It's uh, the only way you can beat is to crowd the way Frazier did. Although, of course, there was quite a lot of people who didn't think that Frazier deserved that decision. A low punch there, and the referee hasn't bothered with it. Yes, he has now. He's told uh, Mathis. Perhaps he heard me saying that. This fellow Mathis might be one of the biggest underdogs in history against Ali, but I can assure you he's no mug the way he's fighting this round. Well, Ali there just was having a look at Mathis, who at the moment is not even bothering to sit down. He's going to stand between rounds. I wonder how long that can keep up. And Ali's saying, I don't know what everybody's worrying about my weight for. I'm a big fellow. I'll never get back to the 15 stone 11 pounds that I fought against Cooper way back in 1963. That was a non-title fight at Wembley. And that in uh, hot climates, I need a lot of liquor and I'm entitled to blow up to 16.3. That's about my best weight. And Mathis, at one time, when he was the national AAU champion, 
he weighed in at a mere 24 stone and he said I need the weight on me and it was a mistake to try and drag it all off So into round two, and we'll see if Mathis continues to at least carry the fight and take the chance of being hit with this left hand. Well, from close up here, I can assure you that it doesn't look to me as though Ali's carrying too much weight. From the exhibitions that we saw in Britain, this is a remarkable achievement to get that off. He's got off about 20 pounds since he was in Britain. And there's just a recap then of Ali's record. And the one for the uninitiated, of course, is that uh, he lost to Joe Frazier last March, 15 round points. Well, I hand it to Mathis for trying his luck there. That's the first right-hander he's chanced and uh, he almost tagged the big man. And they're yelling in Mathis' corner for him to go forward and throw punches, take chances. There's this one man standing between him and the chance to make a million dollars. And in Ali's corner, of course, Boudini Brown is saying to the champ's going to give him a boxing lesson. He doesn't accept that Ali is no longer the champ. What a great left-hand punch that is of Ali. It really is a torture. Keep flicking out and it bounces all the sweat off of Mathis' face there as it lands. Keeps pecking away there. And they're saying, keep boxing champ, don't get rough, you'll get him. That's what they're calling in Ali's corner. They obviously don't want Ali to go in and mix it. Well, the mountain looks a bit immovable at the moment. He's uh, a very big man, but he isn't really a fat man because he's been fat all his life. So Angelo Dundee there pulling Ali's hands off the ropes and resting him on the knees because you can make the arms ache by leaving him on the ropes after two rounds of dancing and just finding his range. And very little being said in the corner there. I think this man really calls his own tune. That's Boudini Brown on the outside of the ropes. Close friend, of course, of Ali. Now a film actor, but he was warned off by the New York State Commission for throwing water over Ali during the fight with Frazier. And that whistle is called the 10 second buzzer. It's the sign for the seconds to get out of the ring. So third round and scheduled for 12. And anybody who needs identification for Ali must have been living in a cave. Now this is different tactics now, he wants to do the, the tying bit as he did with Joe Frazier which turned out to be a mistake because he partially threw the fight away. All this conceit now coming out of Ali. What a superb boxer, how many heavyweights in history could afford to go in 
and try and play with a fellow like a sparring partner. And yet Mathis can walk in and throw punches. He stayed the course 12 rounds with Jerry Quarry, whom, as you know, did a quick job on Jack Bodell. Mathis has defeated George Chavalo, who stayed 15 rounds with Ali. And yet you still have this arrogance. On the other hand, it isn't doing Mathis any damage at all. And I shouldn't think the referees and judges are even bothering to score it. And he's showing he's going to use a bolo punch, the upward scything blow. Greatest artist in the history of heavyweight boxing, no question about it. This is the w one of the ways that uh, Ali manages to psych his opponents. He really demoralizes them without punishing them. And then he just lets a few punches go to put them in their place to let them know he's not kidding all the time. That's the first time a punch really has shifted Mathis off his feet. That left hook there as Ali was backing on the ropes, really did shift Mathis from his right to left foot. He, but he's getting back with one there. The first one landed, but the second one almost landed in the front row. And Ali really sinking that right hand in now. The, the playfulness has finished for a while. He's getting down to business. Big man ducking a bit too low. I would have thought this referee may tell him he's ducking below the waistline, which is uh, certainly a foul in Britain, but they don't bother with the niceties of the rules so much in Texas. Well, it's quite obvious that Mathis would have to sit down at the end of that round. I thought it was a mistake to stand up earlier. That was really uh, pushing his luck too far. He's been taunting Ali quite a bit, and Ali's been saying, well, I think he's overdone it, and he may have to pay for it. It looked in that round as though that was the writing on the wall. Just to recap then with Mathis, lost 2 of 31, and Ali there just talking back to Angelo Dundee, who's saying, let's get down to business. 29, Muhammad Ali, six foot three and a half, just a fraction taller than Mathis. And they're fighting for some North American version of the heavyweight championship, but I don't think anybody takes that one too seriously. And in the fourth round, is Muhammad Ali going to put the pace up a little bit now, as he did in the previous round, or is Mathis saying, well, I've taken his best shots and I can keep going? When you see this ballet by Ali, you tend to think that he's almost saying to the critics, how's this for being fat and overweight? And I think this was the tactics that uh, Ali was telling me in training. He's hoping to move around this very big ring. It's over 20 foot square. Make Mathers chase him the whole time and then presumably tire. That's exactly what happened uh, w against Frazier. Mathis against Frazier, but in fact Frazier was throwing a few bombs in return.
As we come up to the last minute of round four, they're still calling in Ali's corner. Come on, let's go home with him, champ. And Math is certainly trying his luck with that left hook, and he's growling as he throws it, which is intended to put more oomph into the punch. Now they're the ones really sinking in. When he puts those punches together like Ali, you really are seeing the master at work. The one-two punch, the left hand and the sharp right hand shot. But Mathis almost ignoring him and really pitching back in again, full of bravery. And there they're using the uh, Texas girls to carry the numbers board. A bit distracting for Muhammad, ha Muhammad Ali, I would have thought. Certainly is for the audience. And just showing the referee in case he doesn't know it. He seems to be laughing there. Clad in all lemon in case you're without colour. So there's trainer Joey Ferriello trying to tell Mathis what he should do, but then when the 10-second whistle goes, he's out of the ring very quickly and probably says, look out, here he comes. So into round five, and it looked as though Mathis said something to Ali then. Well, I think that may be asking for trouble. And Ali's corner man there, Budini Brown, who calls out every advice going, says, come on, dance, you're not in a street fight. reflex of Ali is absolutely amazing he stands within punching distance and then just flicks his head back as he sees a punch coming at him Mathis not quite sure how to attack, he really is confused, he's trying to pin Ali on the rope but he's frightened to throw himself at him in case he comes hurtling through the rope being sidestepped, rather like the bull on the matador. And as Mathis stands square, so Ali rips in these uppercuts. And these are the times when I don't accept that Ali's carrying an opponent. He's really putting punches together there. He's trying to take Mathis out. And if he can't do it, then he'll probably get back on his bike for a while and give us a dancing act. Slight fallacy about the way that uh, Ali finishes opponents. He can't always call the tune, although he's had about 18 fights where he's correctly predicted the round, which isn't bad going. Well, that's one of the rare punches from Mathis that did get through there, and no joking. 
towards the end of round five. Well, it looked to me as though Ali said to Dundee, what happened there? He hit me, and he just sort of ambled back to that corner as though he was showing just a, a little bit of pain, and there we are on a replay of that fifth round. And there was that left hook there that landed in the ribs first. The right hand missed. And just that final cleaning up process as Mathis looks six feet tall. In fact, he's six feet three. And I think was urged on by that punch as we're into the sixth round. And he tries it again immediately. Well, now this really looks a bit interesting now because for the moment Ali has got the exhibition part over with. And again, Ali fell into that left hook. That was almost a sucker punch. You really could see that one coming. Although Mathis has been inactive, he certainly trained for the solidly for the last eight months, almost every day. He assures us he's done the hardest training spell of his life, and he thinks that that long rest, in fact, did him more good than uh, anything because he got his mental uh, balance back again. He was a bit upset by the fight game. And there we go, we've got a chance here of the Ali shuffle, I suspect. And the other fellow's doing it now. So now we've really got two, a tango for two going. Take your partners for a bloodbath. There's no doubt about it, everything happens when Ali's in action. <laughs> and Mathis almost fell over his feet as he tried to impersonate Ali's shuffle. Well, now I know why that referee wore the pop style shirt. And what a what a tremendous uh, shuffle again there. This really is a come dancing session. Well, Mathis might be taking the most punches, but he isn't allowing uh, Ali to completely upstage him at the dancing game. He's pretty light on his feet for 18 stone, 4 pounds. Well, there you are. This is the first time I've ever seen a replay of footwork in heavyweight boxing. So you see how this 18 stone, 4 pounds there can dance up and down with Clay back to camera. And the mountain really dancing all around. And I can tell you on this rosing here, they sounded like a, a couple of mice scampering over a tin roof.
So Buster Mathis now wondering what his tactics are got to be or what dance he's got to have in the next round. Well, we're into round seven and there were a lot of cynics saying that uh, Mathis would be massacred in the first round, but uh, Big Buster's still functioning pretty well, so it seems that ITV has the real fight of the week. Well, now I'm wondering whether Ali's punches are hurting Mathis at all because he isn't getting through so much now. It's true he's backing off quite a bit and still trying to try tire this mountain. Keeps pecking away with the left hand, Ali, there, so there's no danger that he's winning on points. It's incredible how he switches from sh displaying contempt to a little bit of respect within one punch. If Mathis gets through, then he realizes it isn't quite so easy as he thought. Well, if this Ali's heaviest ever then at 16-3, uh, can certainly a remarkable athlete in the seven round, still dancing, but Mathis is trying to slow him down. And it may be a mistake for Ali to be pinned against the ropes in his own corner there. Just like a piston coming out that left hand there, really. That used to be the English style of left hand. I wonder what happened to that. And Mathis has to go in a crouch now to try and avoid that left hand. Well, there's a close-up, the gum shield there, which is the only piece of protection that a boxer is allowed above the waist with Ali. A great exhibition of left-hand boxing there. This is the way they teach it in the amateur clubs in Britain, and you wonder where these fellows learn this kind of thing right back in Louisville, Kentucky. Who really took that style there? It's a long time, 1960, in fact, since... Uh, then Cassius Clay was light heavyweight champion at the Olympic Games in Rome. That's 12 stone, 10 pounds, and now he's up to 16-3. And the referee having to come over and use the rosin tray because he's slipping around trying to keep up with these rather sizable chunks of beef. So into the eighth round, and at this stage, I would say a good chance of going the scheduled distance of 12. Because Ali has been unable to stop Mathis in his tracks. And there's a lot of excitement there with that punch that got through, but it didn't seem to harm him. It's 
Seems that Mathis is sorting him out in the same spot right above this commentary position to lunge in with those left hooks against the ropes. Referee scoring, by the way, with judges on a 10-point system. And again there, he sinks that left hand to the short rib. That's the kind of punch that could slow Ali. But he's talking to the corner there now. He's, Ali's actually calling out to Mathis' seconds. Don't get excited. He doesn't only taunt the opposition, he taunts the opposition management. And I should think they're feeling a little out of pocket at this stage because they put up $200,000 of Ali's $300,000 purse just for the chance to get Mathis in the ring with him. It looks a little bit as though Mathis is not only tiring under Ali's blows, but under his own efforts now, lugging this weight around with him after eight rounds. And this is the same position that Mathis has been sorting out he roots, roots Ali to this spot. That's Harry Wiley there who's in with Ali. He used to train Sugar Ray Robinson, so he really, Robinson, so he really does have all the top men around him in the corner, but when uh, that bell goes, he's still his own boss. And we're going to get a close-up now and a replay of the eighth round. As I think you will see Ali calling out to Mathis's cornermen because they thought that Mathis had got through with punches and we're getting a little bit excited. So into the ninth round now. It looks as though they'd left the stool for Buster. No, they've removed that as though they knew he was coming back to that corner pretty quickly. Oh yes, he means business, Ali, now. He's really putting these punches together. But full marks to Mathis, he's trying for his life. Now he more or less fell over there. This is a mandatory eight count, no matter how quickly he gets up. No, the referee do, does not constitute that as a knockdown. He's making sure that he wipes the rosin from the gloves. That was not a knockdown. And there's a bit of puffing now around Mathis' face. Now this is where Ali tries to set the man up for the kill again. He bides his time because he really can't always pick the finishing punch. That's a slight fallacy on his part.
Well, I wouldn't be surprised if that extensive tour of Europe is now catching up with Ali. All the travelling and the dining that he had and the speeches probably made his jaw ache and also he's just lugging now a little bit. He's not quite as sharp as he was even though Mathis is going back. He's the one who's taken the punishment. And the referee almost catch being caught up there with that wrestling match. So now we're wondering if Ali's trying to finish this before the 12th, he left it until the last round with Oscar Bonavina, which you saw on ITV, and then again with Jimmy Ellis, he really is cutting these uh, w quick and f successful wins of his when he knocks a man down. He's really leaving it a bit too late now. And I mean, maybe cutting the exit a bit too fine if he thinks he can stop this fellow in the last round. So into the tenth round, and I think that surprised quite a lot of people, including Ali. He didn't make a prediction, but uh, it was felt that he should stop Mathis about halfway. We are getting a superb floor show now from Ali, the way he moves around this stage. And those left hand punches are painful enough. 16 stone, 3 pounds. The end of that left hand, you can really see them flicking in and hurting. He's got the glove tightly closed. Just catching Mathis on the forearms with those uppercuts. The referee having a tough job when he has to go in and try and part them. Pushing off 18 stone, 4 pounds. Mathis takes him doing. Well, it's a long time since I've seen two heavyweights stand toe-to-toe -to -toe like this for so long. 
and the referee still hasn't called break he's just been in part of them once and that's it they're not holding And there's Mathis obviously showing signs now of frustration. He's been saying all week how uh, he was going to carry the fight to Ali, how his life depended on it, how that only he stood in, in his way against earning a million dollars and all the things he was hoping to do. Of course, it was pretty obvious uh, on all known form that he couldn't win, but he's still in there by the 11th round. So round 11, and we're wondering now whether Ali is going to get back on his toes or whether he's going to elect to stand on the ropes and have a toe-to-toe -to -toe punch up. These lunges by Mathis are certainly exciting the crowd at the Astrodome, especially those way up in the bleachers. They really think there's a chance that he could nail Ali. And he nearly did then. He was just a fraction late getting his head back there, Ali, and took that punch on the side of his face. There must be a million people watching throughout the United States who are saying, well, they ought to tell Mathis to do this or they ought to tell Ali to do that. We're always able to see everything from outside the ring. But when you have this left hand hitting you in the face so fast from a very big man, it's much easier said than done. Full marks to Mathis, at least he keeps going. And Mathis has certainly gone flat-footed. That uh, little bit of sprint shuffle we saw early on has gone now. The punches he's taken in the head have gone to his boots a bit. Yes, that was it. I thought he would go there. He was really sagging in round 11. The right hand shot is... I'm absolutely looking right at him here a few feet. He's tired. He's just getting that extra respite there after the mandatory eight count, wiping of the rosin from his glove. Is this the finish? Is he going to toy with him, Ali? It's all over. Just when he wanted to, he picked his punch. Will he make it? No, he's saved by the bell. And under the Texas ruling, you can be saved by the bell. So Mathis can come out for the last round, should his second think that he's fit enough to do so. They have a full minute now to try and revive him. It seems to me a lost cause. It's Buster's last stand. Now there's the knockdown again. And it must have been a great effort for Mathis to get up. So that was the punch really that did the damage. You see how Mathis' legs look like a kid in a playpen there. 
as he goes down with that little clip of a punch similar to the one that Ali hit Liston and yes he's coming out for the last round he's the referee's been over Mathis seconds are saying no he wants to come out and try his luck but it looks to me as though he's all shot so his legs are gone now will Ali show any mercy he did with Jimmy Ellis he stopped him in the 12th round yes he's just toying with him you know this great brash man does have some humility I don't think he's going to hurt this man just for crowd amusement he's already shown that he, what he can do just look at this it's like uh, the father patting the son on the cheek there he realizes he's got Mathis when he wants him ready for taking and somebody's calling out don't let him fool you Ali well he certainly could have fooled me is this going to be a final fling now it looks as though he's going to stay the course by courtesy of Ali he really has turned it into a pantomime and the crowd are actually booing him now isn't that remarkable they'd rather see the killer finish and yes he's fallen over rather like a wounded bull that goes to a wall and wants to give up and surely the referee will show a bit of mercy here and realize what is this all about why do I have to do it the fellow's so far in front So the final minute now of this execution, because that's all it is now. And there's no question that had this fight taken place in Britain, this would have been ended at round ago. Can he do it? Is he timing it again? It could all be over. Seven, eight. No, he looks as though he's going to let Mathis go for the rest of the round. He was looking around wondering where he was. He looked as though he was seeking a friend's assistance to take him home. We're on the last ten seconds. And Mathis at least has made it by courtesy of the great ex-champion of the world and it's all over and the only consolation for Mathis is that he made it to the finish and professionals do like to have that pride to say well I was there at the end but I think deep in his heart even he knows that this was all down to the courtesy of Ali and there is the replay in the last round and you watch as Mathis gets up there Now I'm going to try and have a word with Ali. But uh, Ali went over there to commiserate with Buster Mathis, who was burst there into tears, so Ali has moved away from him. You got the mouthpiece, Angelo. The, the man was utterly out on his feet. Why you got to put him away? Did you hold oh, back? Okay. Every time there's been a brain concussion or uh, killing in boxing, it was because one fighter was in a helpless condition and the referee wouldn't stop it. If the referee had any sense, anybody in the world could have seen that that man was finished and just letting him stay. That was proof, public crucifixion. There wasn't no way for that man to win. He lost every round and he hadn't won that round and he was completely unconscious on his feet and it should have been stopped. And I hope the fool boxing judgments, fool judgment systems that we have around here 
will stop fights and see people hurt because as soon as one killed, they want to say you wouldn't go to the army to fight for your country and you don't like to kill, then why did you kill that man? All right. So leave me alone and shut up and be glad you saw a good fight. <laughs> Listen, Muhammad. And my next fight's in Zurich, Switzerland with Jurgen Blinn. Jurgen Blinn. I want everybody to know we just signed for another fight next month. We're after Joe Frazier, and he's running, he's ducking, and he's talking about he won't fight for a few years. And I hope the public bring him on out with that title and defend it like I did. I'm still resurrecting the game, although they say I'm not the champion. All right, Muhammad. Did you feel that when he went down for the first time, it was from the strength of your blow? It was the linger on. It's just what I've told you. It was the linger on punch. Naturally, it was uh, linger on, and it was the, he was fatigued, too. We both were tired. And I'm not going to deliberately kill or hurt nobody in no ring just to please these bloodthirsty fight crowds who just want to thrill for a few seconds. Final question. Were you satisfied with your performance overall tonight? Well, not really, because for some reason I was a little slow getting started, and I should have threw more combinations. But Buster Matthews is a good boxer, and you just can't punch him around at wheel until you get him unconscious, like I did. Go on in and get cooled off. Mohammed, were you? Why did you carry him like that? Why did you carry him like that, Mohammed? Were you satisfied? I didn't carry him. I think the best precaution in boxing, I hope I can give an example to the world, is when a fella is crucially hurt, when he's physically out, and you know you have the fight won, it was the last round, and the man was completely unconscious, there was no chance for him to come back, and the referee should have been smart enough, and the judge's judicial system of boxing should have seen that the man was finished and stopped it. So somebody should still show some type of civilization and quit trying to hurt or kill a man and give him a brain concussion or blood clot just to please a, just to please a damn crowd. Well, I agree wholeheartedly with you, and I hope we'll be seeing you in Britain very soon. Yeah.